Hey folks, this is Kalani. Patch 8.3 is finally here, and with it comes a horde of new content for you to work your way through, with more coming next reset. We have a whole introduction questline, assaults in the new zones, horrific visions to progress through, and a new Mythic Plus affix and Ray tier to look forward to next week. We also have two brand new factions to earn reputation with this patch, the Rajani over in the Veil of Eternal Blossoms, and the Ulder Accord in Uldoom. A a new rep grind might not be the most exciting thing in the world for a lot of players, but it does mean shiny new rewards to work towards and a reason to log in every day. Let's have a look at all the activities you can do in patch 8.3 to earn reputation with these new chaps so you can hit exalted as quickly as possible, and then forget about them for the rest of the expansion. I always think rewards are the key when it comes to reputations and how motivated you're going to be to actually farm them. If there aren't any rewards waiting at the end of this grindy tunnel, well, then you'll probably stop halfway through and say, stuff it, I don't need another exalted rep anyway. The rewards on offer from patch 8.3 reps are definitely worth going for though. Honestly, the key one is just the rank 3 essences. Everything else is personal preference, but the rank 3 essences are definitely going to be worth picking up. For all doom, you'll get the rank 3 Breath of the Dying Essence. This is shaping up to be one of the most powerful DPS essences, especially for the minor power. I had a feeling it would get picked up a lot at rank 3, but what I didn't expect was to see people running it at rank 1 over some of the other essences we've had from patch 8.2. The minor effect is just that powerful even at the very first rank, apparently. Adding on ranks only adds to that power, so if you're a DPS, you need to pick up this essence at rank 3 eventually. For the Rajani, you'll get the Spirit of Preservation Healer Essence and the Touch of the Everlasting Tank Essence. The Healer one doesn't seem all that amazing at the face of things, but the Tank one could end up being quite useful. I would play it safe and still pick up these Essences at rank 3 because you never know when the dev team will buff an Essence, especially if the Essence is new and no one is using it. The Rajani are important for another reward though, the infinite augment rune for this expansion. This time it's called the Lightning Forged Augment Rune, buy it once, never have to worry about runes ever again. Until the next expansion at any rate. There are also some really cool mounts on offer, as well as pets, tabards, new troop types for mission tables, and a few other bits and bobs. If you want some of the cosmetic stuff, great, even more reason for you to get some reputation going. But even if you don't, it's still going to be incredibly valuable to reach Exalted with both new factions in 8.3. So, now we've established why you probably want to grind reputation this patch, let's have a look at the how. The first thing you'll need to do is work through the introduction quest line. You pretty much can't do anything in this patch unless you get that done first, so off you go, come back when you know all about assaults and visions and whatnot. When that's done, you will also want to look at your Uldu map. If you have a quest available at Ramkahen to do with the League of Explorers, get that done as well. The quest line is relatively short, it might unlock some other options later on, but most importantly the quests give reputation with the Uldu Accord. So that's one thing to get done if you want reputation. After that, we're looking at weekly, bi-weekly, and daily activities. The most important things to get done for reputation, and for a variety of other reasons, are the assaults. You'll have three assaults per week, one of them is the Black Empire Assault, for this first week, that's in the Veil of Eternal Blossoms, the Black Empire Assault will give you 1500 reputation, with the faction tied to the zone that the Assault is in. So that's the Rajani for this week. Next week, the Black Empire Assault will be in Old Doom, so it will give Old Doom Accord reputation. Then it will swap back and forth each week, so just keep an eye on where it is currently and go bash it out when you have the time. There's another type of assault going on at the same time. Faction assaults will be present in the zone that isn't being invaded by the Black Empire. So this week that's all doom. Completing these assaults will give you 500 reputation with the zone's faction, so they're not quite as beefy as the Black Empire assaults, but they're still definitely worth completing. These assaults work a little differently in that they don't reset weekly, they actually reset kind of bi-weekly. Halfway through the week the first assault will end and a second assault will begin. 
So for North American realms, a new assault will pop up in the Old Doom Zone halfway through Friday. For Europe, it should appear sometime on Saturday. So you have one assault in the first half of the week to complete, and another in the second half of the week. Doing both will give you 1000 reputation for the zone's faction, so you don't want to miss either assault. Getting all three assaults done each week shouldn't take too long at all, but if you are short on time at all, then assaults should always be your main priority. Each zone also has its own set of daily quests. There's typically three to five daily quests each day, and they can come from a variety of little hubs and NPCs scattered around the zone. Just have a look at your map, and if you see any spare blue exclamation marks floating around, go check them out to see if you skipped over a daily quest somewhere. The dailies are the usual little chores you might expect. Kill rares in the zone, kill specific monsters, pick up books or relics or other important items, destroy obelisks, you get the idea. They're all all fairly quick to complete, the only one which has been a pain for us so far is the Kill Rares quest. Sometimes the rares just won't stop spawning, other times they don't want to spawn at all. It can be frustrating, but it's going to be worth it if you want the reputation. Each daily quest will reward you with 75 reputation, and it's all going to add up in the end, so you should complete the dailies in both zones to progress both reputations. It's also super easy to finish the assaults by just completing daily quests, so you can overlap a lot of objectives with your plate time. Even though it's not super relevant to reputation farming, it is worth noting that war mode will increase the rewards you get from all of these daily quests, except for the rep gains. You can actually complete the dailies with your war mode turned off, you know, complete what is actually required to do the daily, and then go back to Ogrimmar or Stormwind to turn your war mode back on, and hand them all in. You still get the bonus, even though you had war mode off while actually doing the dailies. Just a helpful hint for anyone who wants the bonus, but doesn't want the chance of a bit of world pvp slowing down their daily grind. There is another type of daily content that will reward you with reputation for both factions in both zones as well, though it is a little harder to keep track of. Each zone will have a handful of events, I think it's usually 5 or 6 from what I've seen so far, and completing each event will reward you with 50 reputation and some other rewards like coalescing visions. If there's 6 events, that's another 300 rep you can get per day. Events are a little harder to find though, they aren't marked on your world map like a daily quest is, so you'll have to fly around the zone a bit until one pops up on your minimap. I would recommend getting some helpful add-ons to ease your search. Rare Scanner has been updated to provide you with callouts when an event is nearby, as well as any rares in the new zones, and you should also get an add-on that shows coordinates somewhere on your map or screen. Honestly, any add-on will do as long as it provides you with coordinates. I know Titan Panel does this, TomTom Tom has an option for this as well from what I know, LVI has it by default, and I'm pretty sure any decent map add-on will include it somewhere. Coordinates make it incredibly easy to find where to go if someone calls an event or rare spawn in general chat with some coordinates to follow, and you can also hop on over to Wowhead and check their Today in Uldoom and the Veil posts, because they've been listing every event that they find in their posts, and the events are the same for everyone in that given day, and they reset and swap around with the daily reset. So the Wowhead post should give you everything you need to clear all of the events in the zone for the day, and they give coordinates so you can easily track them down for yourself. It's the fastest way to make sure you get every event done, so you can move on to other activities. 50 reputation might not sound like a lot, but the events typically take very little time. Some of them are finished in less than a minute, and all of that extra rep will add up over time. There is also one world quest in each zone that rewards an extra 75 reputation, but... And bear with me on this one, it's a pet battle world quest. Hold up, wait a minute, get back here. It's really not that bad, honestly, I swear. It's one pet battle for each zone, and you can cheese the bejesus out of it this time. All you need to do is pop on over to the world quest location on the map and win the pet battle. Boom. Easy. 75 reputation. And I know what you're going to say, but Kalani, I hate the idea of playing Pokemon in World of Warcraft. It just doesn't make sense to me. That's okay. You don't have to like it. Just know that it's going to help you reach Exalted a little bit faster. 
But Kalani, I don't have any max level pets. I never bothered to level any of them up. That's fine too, honestly. I'm not going to tell you to hunt down the perfect setup and level up pets and all that jazz. We had to do that for Naz and Mechagon, but for Uldoom and Vale, we don't at all. What you're going to do is hover over the pet that you need to kill. You want to find out what family or type it is. Is it a critter, beast, dragonkin, magic? That's the key info we need. After you've found that, look at what type is strong against it. This might take a little bit of time going through your pet pet catalog and a little bit of learning, but it is so worth it this time. Beast attacks are good against critters, magic is good against flying type, dragonkin is good against magic types. The next step is to find some level 1 pets that you have with a basic ability that is strong against your target. So I line up a bunch of level 1 dragons to fight this magic pet and just press 1. All you have to do is press 1, and your 3 pets will never fail against a level 1 legendary pet battle. It's literally the easiest thing in the world right now. Because these pets scale with the level that your pets actually are in the team that you're using, if you use 3 level 1 pets, the enemy is level 1. It's so easy. Does it take a little bit of time? Sure. Is it the most boring way to play pet battles? Absolutely, but it takes no effort and it gets it done. If you run out of level 1 pets, you can just buy some more from the auction house for a couple gold each. Pet battles have never been this easy, and it's an extra 75 rep a day that everyone can do. Eventually, we will have access to contracts as well. The recipes for these come from Revered Reputation with the actual faction, so until some scribes get to Revered, we won't see any contracts. But when we do hit that last leg of the rep grind from Revered to Exalted, the contracts can give you a pretty sizable boost to your rep farming. Every world quest you do will give you an extra 10 rep, so if you're clearing the map for AP or anything else, the contracts are worth even more. Keep an eye out for these when you get close to the Revered mark, because some humans on your server might just get there before you. There is one last source of reputation, but we don't know a great deal about it. There are insignias for the Rajani and for the Uldim Accord, which give you 250 reputation when you use them. I haven't gotten any on live service yet, but I did get some on the PTR from the Black Empire Assault boxes. So this could just be another random reward to keep your fingers crossed for, or they might also come from other areas of the game. The main thing I would keep an eye on is the mission table. The dev team has added new missions for each patch. In 8.2 we had missions for pearls, benthic gear, and mechagon crafting materials. We might just see some rep missions with these insignias as bonus rewards to help get our reputation up to exalted with the two new factions. With such limited farming options, it looks like this rep farm is going to be a bit of a slow burner. I'm not all too surprised with this being the last patch of the expansion though, and no patch 8.3 being planned whatsoever, but maybe we'll get some extra quests later on down the line to speed things up after we hit certain milestones. More quests at Honored, Revered, or something, but for now, just get your dailies done, do the events in both zones, finish the three assaults per week, and do those pet battles. You can use level on pets. There's almost no excuse now. And that's it for this video. What do you think about another rank 3 essence being locked behind an exalted reputation grind? Are you doing everything possible to farm reputation, or are you just sticking to assaults and you'll get there when you get there? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon. You can see the names floating by on screen. If you want to join these lovely guys and gals, you can find a link in the description below. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave. If you want to see more, make Make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching, folks. Good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.